All right, so hear me out. You may be wondering why we have these two printers on the workbench here in the Maker Lab at Micro Center today. And what I've got to say to you is that there's a good reason you might consider either of these for your next printer in your arsenal. They're both in the $250 to $300 price band range, and we think that they've both got a ton of great features that we're gonna tell you about today that will help make your mind up on how to spend that extra tax refund money. Today, we've got the Creality V3KE and the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. Just the single printer, not the combo. These printers both have a lot of features in them that are gonna make them a great printer for your arsenal or even potentially a great first printer if you're not sure which one to get in this price band. So let's first go ahead and take a look at some of the similarities between these two printers. Then we'll take a look at some of the differences and take a look at some of the use cases that may point you towards one printer or another. But ultimately, it's great to have printers in this price band with all these features. So let's dive in. All right, so let's talk similarities. Really, these have a lot in common more than you might think. And when it comes to speed, they both tout speeds upwards of 500 millimeters per second. And that speed really is about how fast they can travel, how fast the head can move around and print. Not necessarily the acceleration, that's a whole other ball game. But these printers, again, tout 500 millimeters per second. Realistically, on either one of them, when you get to the slicer, when you get to the software where you're gonna process the file, you're probably gonna be closer to about 300 millimeters per second. But that's still light years beyond the old days where it was 50 millimeters per second. All right, maybe not light years, but at least six times faster. So you've got speed on both of these. That's one of their first similarities. The next similarity really comes into how it handles the bed leveling. Gone are the days, as I've said before, of messing with leveling nuts and doing the old paper test. These both have systems in place to auto bed level and do kind of what's like a mapping of the bed to put into the firmware so that it knows what the ups and downs of the bed are, even though they'll be pretty minuscule. You're talking like 0.2, even 0.1 millimeters of difference across the bed. So they both have that. And really, that's a, one of the biggest things that people struggled with when they first got into 3D printing, even two years ago, was making sure that the bed was level and that your first layer was gonna be perfect. These both do a great job out of the gate in presenting the firmware or presenting the main control board with a great image of what the bed looks like. Now, another thing that these have in common is that they're both keen on connectivity. And what I mean by that is that they both have Wi-Fi built in and allow you to control them from either the Creality Print Cloud app or from the Bamboo Handy Slicer through their cloud as well. So you can send files to these via Wi-Fi, either on your phone or using their respective slicers. This is great because it used to be that if you wanted to have a printer across the room, you would either have to save to a thumb drive and take it over there, or you would have to have your printer, this is even worse, you would have to have your computer always attached to the printer while it was running. So the ability to have something sent via Wi-Fi just makes a world of difference when it comes to actually interacting with the printer. Now, if you are in an environment such as a school or such as a workplace where you don't have easy access to the Wi-Fi and you can't add things to the network willy-nilly, well, they both got you covered there. With the Creality V3KE, you've got two USB ports on the side where you can plug in a flash drive. And on the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, you've got a small micro SD card slot over on the side as well. This is gonna allow you to transfer files the old fashioned way and not have to rely on a closed network. Another feature which is great and is becoming more and more common on these lower cost uh, entry level 3D printers is the screens that you get to interact with. So again, gone are the days of using a small rotary knob to control a two-tone color uh, matrix where you just have text. Now you've got some nice icons that you can use and you're using these touch screens to control things like temperature, select files, connect to Wi-Fi, uh, and then ultimately print. They both have great touch screens on them. The Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, uh, from there you can control a number of features and the same with the Creality V3KE. All right, I mean, aside from the fact that they both print a wide range of materials, especially materials that are good with open form factor printers like these, I think we're okay to move on to some of the differences. 
Now, here's where it's going to get interesting, and here's where we're going to give you some information that we hope will help you make a better informed decision when you go to buy a 3D printer in this price range right now. Let's start with the Ender 3 V3KE. Really, the biggest difference you're going to have on the Ender 3 V3KE is size, the size of what you can print. And it comes down to the standard bed size that you've been getting on most of the V3s and the K1 series as well. And that's a bed size of 220 by 220 millimeters with a height of 250 millimeters. So really, when it comes down to it, depending on the model size, this may be your better bet. The other difference you might find on the Ender 3 V3KE is that the touchscreen is a little bit bigger and has a few other connectivity options. Really, you might not need that when we talk about the A1 here in a second, but the connectivity options on the Ender 3 V3KE allow you to connect not only a USB drive to transfer files, but also be able to connect their Nebula camera system, which has a manual focus. So for doing Wi-Fi remote monitoring and time lapses, this is kind of great because you're able to take the Nebula camera and set it wherever you want it to capture the time lapse of that print. So those are the two main big differences uh, for what the Ender 3 V3KE has to offer. All right, moving over to the A1 Mini, let's talk about some of the differences here. The obvious difference compared to the KE, which we already talked about, is the size. The bed volume is going to be 180 by 180 by 180 millimeters, so basically 180 cubed. Now, I don't really see that as such of a drawback, especially when you're getting started with 3D printing. There's tons of models that you can print that are under 180 millimeters cubed. And personally, when I print, most of the things I'm printing are smaller anyways. So I don't really need that additional bed size very often. So really, when it comes down to the bed size here at 180 millimeters cubed, um, you're not gonna have a problem printing a lot of awesome stuff. Now, unless you have a really small head and you wanna print helmets, you're really gonna be looking for a printer such as the K1 Max or other larger printers that really aren't even in this price band. So not saying that you couldn't print a helmet on the KE, but it's not going to be a full-size helmet. It's going to be more of a model. So again, on the A1 Mini, you've got a 180 millimeter cubed build plate where you're gonna be able to print a lot of great, awesome models to get started. Now, if you're somebody that's concerned about security and you wanna make sure that that camera can't view things, they have included a small hardware option to rotate a small lens in front of the camera to prevent it from capturing any video. So that's all built in from the get-go. The other thing I'll say about the A1 Mini that is very important to remember is that it has the upgradability of adding the AMS light, the Automatic Material System light from Bamboo, which will give you four color multi-material options. So if you're really thinking, hey, I'm just getting into this, but down the line, I'd like to do some things with multi-material or multi-color, this printer is gonna allow you to do that where the KE will not. When it comes to materials, there are some similarities and differences with these machines. Both are capable of doing a wide range of materials, anything from PLA, TPU, ABS, PETG, especially since they're both open form factor printers. You're probably not gonna wanna mess too much with nylon or ASA uh, because they're not enclosed, but they can both handle the basics, right? Um, when it comes to the V3KE, uh, you're only gonna ever be able to do a single material uh, at one time, currently, I mean, within their ecosystem, right? Um, when it comes to the A1 Mini, however, you will be able to add on the AMS light unit afterwards and not only be able to do multicolor, but also multi-material. Think about like a small RC tire where the inside might be petchy, but you want a more flexible material like TPU on the outside. You could accomplish that with this. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. It really depends on your use case. And if you wanna do some more advanced multi-material, multi-color prints, um, the A1 Mini is really gonna be your best bet. So one of the other differences, not, not a huge difference, but something I do wanna address uh, between the two of them is the setup process. Uh, the A1 Mini is really touted as being an out-of-the-box experience with very minimal setup, and that is true. It probably takes all of five to eight minutes uh, to get it out of the box and do the few steps that are in the manual to get it prepared for printing. Whereas the V3KE probably takes a little bit longer, somewhere between 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes if it's your first time setting up a 3D printer. 
But again, I, I want to I reiterate that this is leaps and bounds from where we've come. Even the Ender 3 Pro from a few years ago, that had to be a good 20 to 30 minutes if you were experienced at setting these things up. Uh, and then you still had to do the bed leveling, right? Not anymore. Not with this stuff. No. It's uh, turn them on, let them do their self-tests, uh, and then print. I mean, you have to load the filament, but and then print, right? So um, the setup on both of them is pretty great with the A1 Mini being a little bit quicker. So another somewhat important feature on the A1 Mini, which they took a lot of time to engineer and really thought about the user, uh, was their quick swap nozzle. Uh, it's toolless. Basically, you pop off this front cover, you undo a latch. Um, you, you really want to wait till it's cooled down. You don't want to do this when it's hot. Uh, you undo a latch, you take the nozzle out, and you can put another nozzle in. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you want to test different nozzle diameters, such as 0.2 millimeters, or even going up to like a 0.6 or 0.8 millimeters to get uh, faster prints uh, because you're putting more filament out. Um, so I did want to call that out on the A1 Mini because I think that's a great feature. Uh, and the one or two times I've had to open it up and swap out the nozzle, it was a great experience. So that's another thing that the A1 Mini has going for it. Um, I think the last thing we want to talk about is really the size of these printers and why you might choose one or the other. And for me, it really comes down to uh, whether or not you're already potentially in either the Creality ecosystem or the Bamboo Lab ecosystem. So if you've already got a couple of other Bamboo Lab printers, and you're saying, hey, maybe I just want something smaller to print out some of these smaller parts I print more often, this is a great option. This is, this is honestly uh, something that I would consider adding to my arsenal of printers. Um, if you're already familiar with Creality and you like their products, uh, which I also like their products, um, the KE uh, is great bang for the buck uh, in this model series, the Ender 3 V3. Um, so really, you can't go wrong here with either of these printers. It's just gonna come down to your use case. At the end of the day, for me, the A1 Mini is awesome because of its compact size, and the V3 KE is awesome because it's got a slightly larger build volume. Again, it's up to you. We've got both of them for you here at Micro Center, so come in. You, you wanna talk to one of our really knowledgeable sales associates. Uh, they're gonna help you out. Guess what? They probably own one of these or own any number of other 3D printers we sell as well. So they're gonna be able to help you on your path to becoming an amazing maker. So leave a hashtag below, hashtag I want a micro center near me if you want a micro center to come to your city. And hey, we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.